they say the laws of physics that uh, every action has an equal but opposite reaction. If you hit a ball, it flies away from you. The force, the momentum, the inertia, kinetic energy, it's transferred from one to the other. But for every action, there's not just the equal but opposite reaction. There's also this other strange thing called consequences, intended consequences and unintended consequences. You might slap the ball and find that it flies through the house and breaks a very valuable uh, heirloom. Welcome to Leading Leaders Podcast. Five minute videos, five days a week. I'm Jay Lauren Norris with Leading Leaders Podcast. And I think there's a time that we get so focused in the day-by-day activities that we forget that little actions have this same ripple effect. And sometimes we make small decisions or decisions that seem in the moment to be expedient. In the moment, oh, there's no other choice. We, we really have to do this. And those choices seem like we really didn't have any other choices or in some odd way, they seem like we had a lot of choices, but this was the best one. In fact, this is the one that's kind of circumstantially encouraged. See, there's this really powerful thing in sales, the, the concept of giving people fake options or giving them, giving them options that seem like well, I really only have these two choices. Do I want to cut off my left hand or cut off my right hand? Well, is there a third option? Is there something I can do besides cut off one of my two hands? Is, is that really the only way that I can move forward? I have to choose between, you know, right now in the, in the uh, impact of this virus in our world, we have in a lot of places come down to the decision, will we wear masks or will we continue business? Will we stay at home? and stay safe, as the rhetoric says, or will we get back to our economy, as the rhetoric says? And so we apparently only have two choices. We can either rebuild our economy or we can stay home and stay safe. But it would appear from the rhetoric we can't do both. In the same way that we've got this idea that's being uh, promulgated as one of the only two choices or, or one of the only options, and that is, oh my goodness, if everything you touch and everything that you cough on and everything that you sneeze on or everything you breathe near becomes an infected viral carrier, then my goodness, we, we've got to stop exchanging cash. Quit that. Stay home, stay safe. Don't change cash. Keep your cash to yourself. Keep your cough to yourself. Mask up. All of these immediate choices are, so it appears, the, the, the options are limited. You should choose one or the other. You, you have to pick. Pick now. Hurry up. Pick now. Why haven't you decided? What are you waiting on? Don't you understand how critical this is? Pick now. That kind of mentality has really caused a lot of, let's see, upheaval in our world. It's not possible to believe in both blue lives matter and black lives matter and that all lives matter. You either have to pick a side or die. Pick a side or we're going to burn down your courthouse. Pick a side or we'll tear down all the statues. We don't care which side you pick, but it better be ours. And you see how that mentality, that driving of a false wedge, that implication that there's really only two choices. And see, every one of these choices has both short-term and long-term consequences. Let me give you... A, an example from the concepts of leadership and management. There's a very powerful phrase in management that says, you cannot manage what you do not measure. You cannot manage what you do not measure. So let me ask you this question. If a drug dealer standing on the corner with a kilo of cocaine and he's gonna get $80,000 for that kilo of cocaine and somebody pays him in cash and he decides with that cash to open a restaurant. Well, the bank's going to look at that and go, where'd you get the 80 grand? Because they want to know the answer to that question. But if he decides instead to spend that at the strip club or spend that at the casino or go buy a car with it that he's going to sell or buy several cars, cash cars, at an auction and then sell them, that people just kind of anticipate, well, he's got a lot of cash. Where'd he get the cash? I don't know. I don't care. Those are not the kind of people that track that kind of transaction. But the minute... Society goes cashless. You can track every transaction the, the drug dealer does. He gets 80,000 in cash, but there is no cash. 
Where'd the 80,000 go? Well, it's got to go onto a digital device of some sort. Well, what kind of digital device does it go on? Probably a credit card or maybe a, an Apple Pay or a Google Pay or something attached to your phone. And now suddenly, anybody who can hack into any kind of financial system, anybody who has access to your bank records, anybody who can subpoena your bank records knows every penny you made to make sure they get their taxes on it and everything you spent it on to make sure they agree with how you spent your money. Because we know there are people out there that if you support a certain type of a cause, um, you're basically out of business. If you don't agree with a certain type of mindset, where you invest your money, spend your money, save your money, keep your money, hoard your money, becomes their business all of a sudden. And they will dox you and they will cancel you and they will make sure that you can't do business anywhere that they don't want you to do business. And they will basically put you out of business if you don't do what they tell you to. And this level of compliance is dependent upon the ability to observe you. See, the, the power of cash is there's you got to reach a certain level before the bank even cares. You've even got to reach a certain level if you're giving cash to a kid or to a contractor who's doing you got to reach a certain level over the course of a year before the IRS even says you have to report it, either the person receiving or the person giving. And up until that point, they don't care. See, that's a powerful thing to understand that every penny becomes trackable and traceable. Every nickel, every dime, every dollar, every quarter, every $10 bill, every $100 bill, every $10,000 transaction. You can't send someone on vacation as a thank you without the IRS knowing it. Why did you do it? What was the gain? What was on the backside? See, every action has a consequence, a ripple effect an unintended consequence or an intended consequence. And when you think about how did we get to the place where the rhetoric says you'll either wear a mask, stay home and stay safe, or bring the economy back. How did we get to the place where those are the only two options? And, and if I were looking at options on a menu of pizza, this would be like saying you can have cinnamon and raisins or you can have jalapenos. Right? Because the, these two options don't appear to me to be options that are, that are co-equal. They don't appear to be options that, well, you can have this or that, the face of the coin or the tail of the coin. No, these, these seem like the face of the coin or the bottom of the shoe. Th these are the kind of options that we're getting. How do we get to a place where the option of coins is no? Okay, is there another alternative? Is there like a hand washing system we can put them through to make sure they don't have germs? Can we, can we not like spray them when they're in the cash register with something that would kill the virus? It, it is really... No change, no cash. Is that really, is that really the only option? I mean, it, there's not even an alternative. It's just no. How did we get to that place? See, it, that leads me to believe that the people who put up those options, you will either destroy your economy and wear a mask, or you will save your economy and not wear a mask. Okay, again, how did we get to those two decisions? Are they the only ones? But that seems to be the rhetoric. Who decided those were the two we'd argue about? Who decided that a cashless society was the answer to stopping the spread of the virus? Was it scientists? The same ones that said mask, no mask, mask, no mask, mask, no mask, stay at home, doesn't matter, six feet, 10 people in a restaurant, 200 people in a restaurant, 9,000 people at Walmart, but 10 people in a restaurant, no people in a church, 10,000 people on the street. Is that science or is that political gerrymandering. I, all I'm saying is somebody's making decisions somewhere that we're getting two false paper tigers as our options. And those options, they're not making much sense to me. But I'm still looking at the cashless society and I'm thinking there will be a time soon when you won't be able to comb your hair without somebody knowing about it. And if they don't like the way you combed it, they now have complete control of your finances. They don't like the flavor of coffee you bought, no coffee for you. They don't like where you bought your soup, no soup for you. They don't like who you did business with last week, who you sponsored last week, where you bought your advertising last week. They don't like whose business stayed in business because you did business with them, no business for you. I'm just saying follow the trail a little bit and then ask yourself the question, who decided that these were our options?
Because every action, every option, every choice has consequences. An equal, op equal but opposite action and consequences. A ripple effect. I'm Jay Lauren Norris with Leading Leaders Podcast for Tell It Like It Is TV. Have a blessed day. Subscribe now for our extensive video library of leadership lessons promoting faith, family, and freedom.